Hi, Cal here from the skeleton closet. Welcome in, welcome in. Okay, a welcome out is probably the more mm, appropriate term for it, we'll say. Than that because I'm currently working away in a hotel. So what I need is assistance from you guys. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. There's some happy parts, there's some sad parts. But I'll make it as quick as possible. But I think it's important to, for you guys to understand just how new I am to this right now and how I got to this point. So we'll go back a few months. Me and my partner moved into a new house. And for me, for work, I work away. For, can be for several weeks at a time and then I'll go home for several weeks and I do kind of rotations on deployment like that. It's a lot of fun, I enjoy my job, love it a bit, but during the downtime I need something where I can just kind of relax and switch off and that kind of thing. And moving into the new house gave us the space to be able to explore other options. And years ago I used to be quite crafty but I kind of lost touch with that over time, you know, things take over like university, life, being a mother, and that raising my daughter, all that kind of things. But now I have all this time. I want to get back into it. So it started off with me having a little nosy, you know, scrolling through the old YouTube and everything else, and I discovered book notes. And thought, oh, I kind of like them, they're kind of cool. So first thing I did was get a book note, but one book note turned into about 12 and yeah, many members of my family now have book notes. And uh, along the way, lots of other people and uh, have also gone, oh, we like the look of that, and they've joined in too. So now we've all just turned a little bit book note crazy. But while I was doing that, I find kind of felt a little bit constrained to the limits on what a book note gives you. And I wanted to do something more, you know, kind of experiment a little bit more with it. So from there, I kind of found out about dioramas and making your own. So I was like, oh, do you know what, I'll give that a go. So I was giving that a go and we've got various different bits and pieces of kit. And we're still doing that, we're enjoying that very much as well. And I'm still doing the book looks as well when I'm at home. But we started off going down kind of like the, kind of like the war hobby side of things. It was more the World War II reenactments, obviously the soldiers, the military ones, the Tamiya products, all of that. And they're excellent and we enjoy them. But again, you're constrained to kind of one area and I wanted something a little bit more. And then, so I'm doing this, but at the same time, this is where the subject comes in. I'll get through this as quick as possible. Don't worry, I'm not about to get weepy on you. Please don't go anywhere and that. But at the beginning of March, unfortunately, I lost my father and that he passed away. And I wanted to do something to kind of like commemorate some of the bits and pieces that he'd done in his life. And one of the things that he'd done was, he was a Grenadier guard, he was part of the Queen's company. And it was one of the parts of his life that he was really, really proud of. He was really proud to serve and he enjoyed it immensely. And unfortunately, after serving for quite a number of years, he got medically discharged following a tug of war incident. We'll just leave it at that. But I wanted to do something to commemorate him and because I've been doing all these merch figures, I thought, is there a Grenadier Guards one? So I ended up getting a scale model of a Grenadier Guard and I think it was about 1 to 20, no, it wasn't 1 to 24, I think it was 1 to 12. I'll have to have a look when I'm back. Can't look at the minute because I'm not here. I'm not at home. And that once again, I'm working away. So I got this and painting a smaller figure and that I actually found a lot of comfort in it and it actually really helped me in the run up to his funeral and everything in finding a place where I could switch off, I was finding it enjoyable, so I wanted more figures. So me and my partner went off to our local hobby store and at this point I'd seen like Games Workshop and everything when I was younger in my hometown where I grew up but never really ventured in there and this particular store had a lot of Games Workshop products in there and uh, uh, Warhammer stuff, all of that kind of thing. So obviously we go in and we're looking at the other stuff, but then the other stuff is catching my eye and I'm like, oh, this is different. This looks good. I want to go with that. So where my partner walked out with a World War II vehicle, bits and pieces to craft, I walked away with my first Warhammer figures. <laughs> and I got home and I painted them up and I kind of enjoyed it and then I went on to Amazon and then I went down a whole rabbit hole and that kind of leads us to where we are now. 
I'm really, really enjoying the miniature painting. Really enjoying it. But I'm new, so I'm not very good. And so, and on top of that, I've been deployed to go out to work again. So now I'm in a situation where I'm dealing with limited supplies. Um, you can't get anything in this country. I'm going to point that out first and foremost before we go any further. There is nothing you can acquire in this country to do with the hobby. It's a closed economy. They don't stock anything like that. Their version of tabletop games is very, very different from ours. Um, so I am limited to what I have. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick tour of what I do have here. And we can have a quick look through that, see what I've got so you know what I'm working with and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit. These rooms do not have good lighting, I'll tell you that now. This is the best <laughs> lighting that I can get at the minute. Spotlight helps in the evening and obviously the daylight helps during the day. Um, I do miss my ring lights and everything else, but yeah, here we go. So we've got our hobby mat, our cutting board, you see here, my little painting handle there. So you three, we've got a wet palette, Brush cleaner, I am so glad I brought this with me because it is helping me look after the brushes. I am in the process of learning to do that now. I've got a mixture of brushes there. Most of these are synthetic brushes. Because I'm fairly new to the hobby, I don't want to spend too much money on expensive brushes and then end up trashing them. However, there are, from the Army Painter paints that I got, there is an Insane Detail brush and a Regiment brush in there, which are sable, but obviously, I think more towards the lower end rather than the very expensive ones. So, you know, I'm learning with them. Okay, we've got various filing sticks, tweezers, hobby knife, and some makeup brushes back here just to keep me going. Obviously, a glass of water. Not for drinking. Good old blue tack, in case I need that. And then the paints that I've got are a mixture of, like, the speed paints I bought kind of, like, last minute. Just threw them in there. There was a variety of colours there. I figured I'll try them out, see what I think of them. So I've got a little starter pack there, plus um, a supplementary pink, because we all need some pink. Um, we've got some of the zombie side wall paints. So these came with a couple of metallics, um, a couple of shaders. So there's like a plague shader and a dark shader there, and then some other colours in here. But they were quite muted. They're all darker, because obviously this is zombie related. It's going to be darker. So supplemented that with my Humbral Red, which was from when I did the Grenadier Guard. So I brought that with me because that's a nice bright red. And a lot of saturation there. And then I've got my AV Game colors as well, which love these paints. Really, really good. I'm enjoying them a lot. This is a mix of colors there. Random Extra Green Stuff World Fluorescent Paint in Violet. Um, yeah, and obviously, as I said, the speed paint. Got some plastic glue. Now, some of the models that I've got are the push fit ones. So I do want to work on, obviously, removing those push fit attachments and gluing them together just to seal up some of the gaps in them. Because I don't have milliput, I don't have green stuff, I don't have anything that you'd use to fill gaps. So we're going to have to go with the plastic glue <laughs> and hope it works. Um, the cutest, cutest kind of like masking tape ever that I picked up from the airport on the way because I was like, what if I need to tape things off to kind of protect them. I want to get something. So I saw this. Yeah, it wasn't cheap, but it's cute and I like it. Okay, we've got some cotton wool pads, some cotton buds, bits of sponge that I brought from home. Oh, and spare parchment paper there. So we've had a look at what I've got. We've had a look at my collection. It's not the smallest collection by any means, but it was as much as I could bring out with me. Um, there is stuff to work with. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, well, it's me, I've got nothing to work with. I have got some stuff to work with. It's just making it work and learning different techniques as I go along and putting them to use. So from there, we've had a look at the supplies. Now you need to know what I've got to work with model-wise. Um, I had to bring small models out. I couldn't bring much in the way of the larger scale models or anything like that. So they are all small ones. There's a selection. We've got a little bit of Warhammer. We've got a little bit of Zombie Side. We've got um, some Dungeons and Dragons tabletop figures. Um, we've got a little bit of everything there. So I'm going to introduce you to that lot so you can see what we're working with. And I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay. Okay. So this is what we're working with with the Warhammer side of things. Okay, we have some lovely little griffins. 
here. This one I'd already painted and that when I got here. It's okay. It's not the best. I was trying a little bit with the contrast paint. And then what I ended up doing was I actually took some of this blue to put down as a base coat and then ended up using, if I can find it, do have like a, oh there, the Beowulf blue and that contrast paint over the top just to get it a little bit more saturated on that side of things. And then I've used a little bit of the purple swarm just on like the tail end and on the head and the fur and stuff like that just to give it a little bit of contrast in there too is it the best thing ever no it's a start though and i actually quite enjoyed doing it glad i brought the set the eyes are terrible don't don't go anywhere the eyes were just eyes are the bane of my life at the minute there's something that i really really need to practice on and figure out as i go along but yeah this is my first go as you can see i've got another five over here that i can work on which is really good one of the other things I did, this was the first model I did when I first got out here. These guys love them to bits. So I did, this was the first model I did when I first got out here. These guys love them to bits. And uh, um, the reason why they're not on the stands is because in true me fashion, I actually painted the base for one and the horse and rider for the other and yeah now they're a mismatch set so this it's not too bad i've been learning things on the way as you can see underneath it is still very much the original color of the model so when i originally did the priming i did not get it all underneath um which was a bit of an issue i oh, know the original color was gray so i managed to get some green and i don't even know what happened there but i mean he's not too bad and that I was playing around a lot with dry brushing here to obviously get that gradient and see what I could do there. Does it look chalky? Heck yeah. That's something that I need to work on. But he's a good start. When it comes to the bases, I actually really enjoy doing these bases. And I know I've probably gone a bit far on the detail and that kind of thing. But I just really love like the intricate details and all that kind of thing. So I was really enjoying doing these. And you can see, this base is primed black. This is primed white. Just don't ask. Okay, we've got ourselves a what's it gone? A tomb banshee here. So this is from the night haunt thing. So I've got like the leaflets um, and that kind of thing for some of them, not all of them. So yeah, we've got night haunt tomb banshee here. So all of these models I had to prime before I came out. There are a few that I hand primed out here, and that which was fun times. I don't recommend them. And that, but obviously because I can't prime out here, I had to do that at home. So yeah, this is this little lady. That head and that hair, just don't ask, is the most tricky thing ever. And then we've got our other banshees here. So again, I've got the information on these guys hit too. So these are the Mermon Banshees. I love these, these things. I think they're really, really nice and that fairly, the paint jobs look fairly simple. But I think you could have a lot of fun with these. And of course they've got those bases that I absolutely love as well. And that now even the paint, though the paint job looks simple, <laughs> I already know it's not gonna be. And as I mentioned earlier, my griff hounds. I've got um, the fly for them as well. So these are um, Warhammer Age of Sigmar griff hounds. And so this is the Warhammer stuff, apart from one guy. Okay, so while I was at home, I was like, do you know what? I reckon like if I do something bigger, that might help. Now, I went to the complete opposite end of the scale. I went from obviously these guys that are tiny, and I looked for. A nice big dude. Now he is a work in progress. He is nowhere near done. And now uh, there is a long way to go on this dude. <laughs> and I kind of regret doing him because I'm kind of, I have to take breaks in between because I'm really not enjoying this. And uh, so I got one of the McFarlane toys, <laughs> Mac Orcs. And I am laughing because it has been fun. I mean, there are certain parts of it. Let me just remove this off the back. So, you know, obviously on this side of things, I've enjoyed this. It's been good for 
And obviously learning brush control, doing the little details, that kind of thing, painting things of all different sizes. And also like trying to get kind of even coats on things that are larger in surface area. So it's good in that side of things. I don't think it'd be very good for, I don't know, testing your washes or all of that kind of thing, but I'll see what I can use it. It is a test model and that, um, and we'll go from there. This is nowhere near finished, so don't come at me because, you know, obviously his guns aren't done and this, that and the other and his face isn't done. Again, this is just a model for me to kind of play around with, practice with, and once I get home, never look at it again. The one thing that is really frustrating me about it is every time you move it around, even though it's been primed, it's been painted, you can see here, there's all this chipping here, there's all this chipping here, the paint just chips off it like that as well. So I probably wouldn't buy another one of these. Um, another couple of guys I've got, now I've got a big box of these at home, like the, these little skeletons that you can build and put together and all that kind of thing. So I've got some of these. Um, as you can see, they're not finished. I'm working on them at the minute. They've just had a coat of bone white and that's pretty much it. Coat of bone white and a little bit of gold on the shield for now. So yeah, I've got to finish those off and do them. Um, this is this is where it gets entertaining. Okay, so we mentioned earlier the zombie side, pa zombie side paints and I got the zombie ones, but I did get a pack of, like an expansion pack of survivors. And you want to see my journey on this so far. This is actually quite entertaining. So this was the first lady I did. Look at those eyes, they're beautiful. <laughs> this is not a good... It's, a, it's okay, it's okay, but it's not the best. Um, she definitely needs a lot more work. So then I did this guy and I was trying, you know, I'll just do black dots for the eyes and then I put a wash all over him and now he looks extremely dirty. Also the dry brushing on him, I'm not too happy with it because it's just too much. Although I am enjoying his bike. So that's a good thing. And then this is my next guy. Definitely looking a little bit better. I've got a little bit less on the dry brushing. He has got some blood spatter on him as well. I had to go with some freehand tattoos. Do not pay me to be your tattoo artist because he's not going to go well. But like, you know, I enjoyed this one a little bit more. It's still not perfect, not by a long shot. But then it's not about achieving perfection, it's about improving, you know, improving with each model as I go along and, you know, trying something different and learning as we go. And at the same time, I have obviously <laughs> the rest of the guys. Now, you'll notice there's a difference in priming. Some of these guys have got more of a Zenithal highlight prime going on. These ones that do with the original ones that I was bringing out, okay? And then at the last minute, me and my partner were talking and he was like, well, you know, it's six weeks. You might want to take the others as well. Now they weren't primed. So popped a little bit of a um, brush on primer in a bottle and brought these guys out. So these have got like a brush primer on them. I don't like brush primer. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. I'm just going to point that out now. So yeah, so we've got plenty more of those guys to do. So I'll move them to one side. Okay. And the other thing I've got, the last thing I brought out with me was was this um, Path tabletop gaming figure set? I think these ones are made more for like Dungeons and Dragons, that kind of thing. And that they're not highly detailed models, but they're good for practicing on for my purposes. So we've got this lady here. I was trying to practice a bit of wet blending on her skirt and it went wrong, so then I covered it up and then I was trying some highlighter. These are practice ones. These are by no means ever going to be. Um, no one's I use, and as you can see, the weapons are just bent. They, they are so like, what's happened to his swords, man? It does get more entertaining as you go. You know, we've got some, we've got stuff there. I mean, the stuff you could get away with being slightly bent, but there's, you know, there were 20 figures in this box, various different characters. So I put some of them out with me. There's one larger figure in there. I didn't bring him. He was not a good quality print lots of he almost looked like a pixelated dude so not the best guy ever so I left him at home because I want to try and smooth him out a bit more these have as I say these have less details on them in a sense so you know they'll be good for practicing various different techniques as we go without being too overly complicated so that's it 
that is what we have to work with. So you've seen the supplies, you've seen the models, and from there, we need to come up with a way to make it work. So which models do you think I should try next? Which ones should I have a go at? Um, what techniques do you guys recommend for beginners? I can't do any additional priming. That's not a possibility while I'm out here. I can't, yeah. Other than that, I think we're okay with everything. Obviously base coating, um, dry brushing, highlighting, layering, wet blending, all the techniques. You can tell I've spent a lot of time on YouTube. So let me know what you think are beginner friendly techniques to build up from because I've got some, you know, obviously I've got work and everything, but I do have some free time as well. And I do aim to spend at least a couple of hours each night painting and practicing those skills and working on them and building them up. So it'd be really nice if you guys out there in the community, whether you're new to the hobby yourself and you just want someone to go along with as you also learn, or whether you've been doing miniature painting and all of that kind of thing for so long and you have the skills and you want to share your story, please do in the comments below, it'd be really helpful. I am a literal brand new channel, brand new. And that's so uh, any kind of advice and help and all of that kind of thing from you guys would be really, really appreciated and will definitely help me. You've seen what level we're at. I've shown you. There's no holds barred on that stuff. <laughs> and that's so uh, it'd be really good if you can give us some info. If you've enjoyed this, if you want to follow on the journey, then as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all of that kind of thing. That will really help as a new channel for us to kind of get off the ground and get started. But yeah, that's me for now. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to see you again soon. And I really look forward to reading your comments. So bye-bye for now. <laughs>